it's a, it's a very, uh, let's say, traditional uh, idea. It's a head, a kind of a portrait uh, on, a, on a base. On a, I mean, very simply. Uh, on the other hand, it was um, the lamps, which are downstairs, which are outside. This is a kind of study for the lamps. So the idea that the, the eye, let's say, is a kind of um, uh, uh, an entrance way or also a kind of um, way for the light to come out, mm -hmm. that the eye becomes a kind of central and almost architectural. So this was being worked out in this sculpture. Light comes out of the eye, so... Uh, in this case, it's dark inside, but the, yeah, in the other ones, the, 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 in both sculptures, there's the idea of you know, a hole, your eyes kind of a hole through the thing. And so in, the, in this case, it was a kind of study for those, but in this case, the darkness was the, the key and the feeling that you want to go inside. Go inside. Yeah. And uh, all of your sculptures uh, have these very visible moves, uh, touches of your hand. And yeah. It's like really craftsman. Uh, craft, really uh, I'm a bad craft, I'm a bad craftsperson. Is the, well, because, um, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of a good craftsmanship is kind of the removal of the hand. You know, it's like craft is like perfection. You know, the idea of, the, you know, a finely crafted ceramic or something doesn't have the hand. And in a way, I'm somebody who struggles with, with, with the craft. And that's what you see, is the struggle I have or the impatience or the uh, clumsiness sometimes or the kind of uh, inability to... Uh, Make a perfect thing. Make a perfect thing, yeah. I try to make perfect things. I, I, I want them uh, to look like Jeff Koons' sculptures or something like that, but I, I fail in that endeavor. All your sculptures are like big pieces, heavy, and like very objects, very much objects, very, yeah. like, very much reality in this, in this subject. So yeah. um, how do you feel, how do you see the position of sculpture and sculptor as a person in a, in a reality which moves and changes very rapidly? It runs contrary, it runs in contradiction to the idea uh, of the late 20th century and the early 21st century which is compact, very, very useful, pragmatic, move quickly, uh, dematerialization, you know, the internet, da, 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 da. But I didn't really make it to be part of that or not be part of that. I've always uh, felt that the way something, uh, the way you touch something, the way you look at something, the way you uh, make it is, is very important. Uh, it's a very important, very ancient uh, need. And, um, and again, I came from a generation that had no real art making skill. So I had this desire to, 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 to sort of break that down, kind of come back into this idea. And then the ball starts to roll and then you get yourself more and more involved and the challenges and the painful quality of it and the difficulty become a kind of addiction. It becomes a kind of excitement because uh, somewhere you enjoy, you know, I must really enjoy this feeling of impossibility and that there's some kind of metaphor in that physical impossibility, you know? Uh, I've heard you said, so, uh, said something like this, that your sculpture put, and uh, working with your sculptures and uh, percepting them it puts you in some kind of medieval age or even earlier in this uh, stone age era. Yeah, well, you, uh, we were, I was talking earlier with Fabio, you, the sculpture really doesn't progress. That, that's a very interesting thing. Most forms of human endeavor we get better at, you know, like athletes run faster, medical science gets better, da da da. But it's very hard as a sculptor once you get into the, the, the idea of doing it. I've never heard a sculptor who can say they are a better sculptor than Michelangelo, or a better sculptor than Brancusi, or a better sculptor than the Egyptians, you know, or the Mayans, or the. It's, uh, you don't have this gradual getting better. You have this, these weird waves. So actually, I learned the painful way that as you get more and more involved in sculpture, you are pushed backwards. You look, you find yourself looking backwards, even in the way that you make things or move things. Sometimes the Aztecs were much more um, sophisticated in the way they used and the way they manipulated materials than, than we can now. We, we do a very bad job at manipulating materials. Oh, 
we, I, our culture does a terrible job. We do a terrible job of moving things, generally mm -hmm. speaking. So. And uh, okay, so, and so uh, what's the relation between sculpture and time? It's like, uh, yeah. it's, uh, is there any? Oh, of course, because you, uh, you know, we have from some of the most ancient ob uh, artworks we know are sculptures, of course, you know, or, or um, are remnants of, but it's, it's, you know, the Venus of Willendorf, things like this. Deep time is often sculpture and um, something about uh, an object like wood or metal or something like this, it, it's, um, it has a relationship to the universe. Uh, it's beyond a specific moment, kind of, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, uh, it's the time within the material has a, a real cosmic uh, quality. You make it, you do this series of actions as you make it, there's time in that. There's time in when plaster, you know, if you're working with plaster, you have like 15 minutes before it, it goes hard or clay dries. So there's time in the actual thing. But then somehow once something becomes an object, the, the human's really removed from it. It becomes its own entity, its own. And then it relates to, for example, in this case, bronze, which will definitely live longer than me, right? I mean, I'm going to die much faster than that. Yeah. So you have this uncanny feeling you're creating something that's going yeah. to stay here longer. Yeah, than there's a mixture of that and a Frankenstein quality, which is you've made something you shouldn't have, you know, you've played with something you really shouldn't have played with or something. But isn't it also something that uh, artists want to achieve, that to create something that will last? I think the greatest feeling in the world is when, it, when, it, when I've, when, or for me, when I've made a sculpture and it's a very simple thing, like it's clay or it's, it's not a special trick, it's not moving, it's not, but it's just what it is. And it, you, every now and again, you have the luck where you make this thing and it takes on an energy and a character of itself. And I can't explain why that happens. I'd like to think I can, and when I was younger, I would try and rationalize it. But now I, it's as if you give the thing its own sort of entity in the world. And that's a very, uh, that's an extraordinary feeling. And you, you, you sometimes, I've had it every now and again with my own work, but I, I've seen it in other sculpt, sculptors. That's one of the things that's drawn me into it, is you'll see these objects and they're not really made by someone. In, yeah, the, they the, the they become to their own, you know, like an Egyptian sculpture, you don't really know who made it. It's like the universe made it or something. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. hard to believe. Whereas with Jackson Pollock, you know it's Jackson Pollock oh. or Picasso. Or, but, you know, sculpture has this so strange kind of, you know, it's almost best when the artist is, disappears, something like that. Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank You're you welcome. Oh, sorry. Oh.